hey guys welcome back to my channel i am posting a bougie book club reaction that i did on wednesday it was the final week of Q the relations we discussed chapter three and chapter four um, in some of this video along with doing a live reaction and commentary to the Brittany Marshall video where she initially kind of um, told the story of Keisha and Jeremy and gave a, her opinion on the situation so here we go and uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and thank you so much for coming to my channel if you're new here go ahead hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post another video take care hey guys how are you welcome 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 it's Wednesday night it's nine o'clock and this is the final meeting or the final um hour that we are going to spend on cue the relations so um i know we have a, still a small community but we are growing since the last time we've grown by another three or four which is really encouraging but i think what i'm going to do when you guys have a chance to listen to this comment down below and let me know um I'm thinking Saturdays or Sundays would work better for this because it's more chill. Um, this is the night before Thanksgiving, so it's a heavy cooking night. And um, it's kind of hard to have the conversation with such a small group. So this is what I'm going to do. Today, I was able to listen to and watch um, the Marshall Party of Five, Brittany, um, and her video that she put out December 11th, almost a year ago, um, after Keisha released the book. I never got a chance to see this and I got a chance to listen to it today. And it was really interesting. It was funny because I really kind of felt Brittany in like two different ways. So it was kind of interesting, but I, depending on how many people show up, um, we can stop and have some conversation, but um, I suspect that this is going to be me and I'm going to do a reaction to this video and I might just release it out and everyone can kind of chime in their thoughts. Anyone who has read the book and anyone who wants to read it, it is available, I believe, on KeishaAndJeremy.com. You can purchase it. And or um, if you are in a friend circle and someone wants to loan it to you, I guess that's their prerogative. Um, or see me if you um, if, if you need additional information. But anyway, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking in. And um, keep in mind, next month, December, we are going to start uh, Erica N. White. Erica is known as Love by Erica on these YouTube streets. And she's been in um, some interesting situations of late. Uh, but Erica is about to have her second YouTube streets baby, her third baby in total, potentially her third baby daddy. Um, maybe it's just her second we're not really sure but Erica seems to be going through it and she wrote a book three years ago and it's called listen and that's going to be the book that we are going to read in December so some light reading and then we're going to roll into 2022 with um some little uh, some longer um, work, but also some different, um, some different types of work that I think will be awesome, uh, for 2022. But, you know, since it's the holiday season and we want to kind of keep things a little bit light, um, that's what I thought would be a great idea. So anyway, guys, um, get your coffee, get your drink, whenever you're watching this, get your snack. And we are going to react to this video. I think that, um, there's been a lot of people who never saw it. And so we're going to almost start at the beginning, but we might skip ahead a little bit because this video is almost like right at an hour long. So we're not going to go through the whole thing, but Brittany really tells the story. And um, it's interesting. Okay, this is her from her point of view. And really, it's so appropriate because it kind of takes up right when 
chapter three and chapter four. So let's go ahead and get into this. And uh, you know me, I'm going to stop along the way. All right. But I'm also coming to you all as a woman, a wife, a mother. So just because my best friend can't just, you know, I'm not just basing it all on that. And if y'all really rock with me, if y'all been rock with me, you part of the gang, then you already know I keep it 100, okay? I do. So don't expect nothing less. <laughs> don't expect nothing less. Um, also, trying to be messy or whatever, 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 then this video is already approved by my girl, so no worries there. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna say quite yet, so we're gonna get into it to see what I say. How many things I'm gonna spill? It's a real question, you know? Oh, yeah. Little backstory, well, not really backstory, but a little backstory. Me and Keisha been friends since 2016, I believe. 2016, we became friends. Um, and we got closer and closer and closer over the years. So, yeah, that's my girl. Um, so this video is basically definitely defending her in a way. Because I see so many videos out here that are like bashing her. Her comments bashing her. It's been a little better now, you know, lately, but before like when the book first came out and all that stuff, bashing her. Like it's ridiculous, y'all. Y'all really need to chill out a little bit. Wait, I think. So, Brittany came. In my opinion. So, just to give a little bit of backstory for those of you who don't know, um, Brittany came with some energy that I think people were not used to seeing from her. And I think that it made people feel like. Darn it. It made people feel like, okay, where's this energy coming from? Like, what is really going on here? Um, and why are you all of a sudden coming out with this, um, you know, with, with so much energy uh, for Keisha? And we're not really hearing what we, what we think is coming from you or what is consistent with what Keisha had been telling so I think that um, it just really rubbed people the wrong way. And as you can see, I mean, this video was in super high demand and it has roughly about 11,000 views, but her apology video has 90,000 views. So it's very interesting the amount. So like when that video kind of came out, people were all over the place. Um, kind of like what's going on and why is she telling all of Keisha's secrets meanwhile um, she took it down very quickly because if you can see right now it has right about 11,000 views let me add it back to the to the live so I definitely know the ins and outs of the situation I know a lot more information okay so she has been kind of intimately in the circle and knowing really details that a lot of people did not know I think people felt like she told too much she did too much she told too much so where she really did defend Keisha a lot in my opinion I think it made Keisha feel uncomfortable to the point the extent but anyway if you've seen the documentary then you know, um, I went on there and I spoke on Jeremy's infidelity. I spoke briefly on Jeremy's infidelity. I was the one who actually saw Jeremy um, out with another girl. My bachelorette party. Um, it's so crazy, y'all. It's so crazy. My bachelorette party. My friend, one of my other friends, my other friends made, she felt this condo that we were at and or this apartment in law, whatever you want to call it. She found it and like Keisha knew of it, of course, because she was helping plan the event, but she didn't really know 
but she just got an address like everybody else. So how crazy is it that I get out the car at my bachelorette party in the parking garage, about to get ready to go in the elevator, and I don't send that man from the parking garage, that man in the front went on the elevator, my folks come out more, uh, my girls come out in the car, whatever. I just happened to see Splash. I know what Splash car look like. I know what Splash look like. Oh my God, I'm Jerry Splash. I never got Splash. <laughs> but y'all know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm standing right here with my uh, with my friends, cousins or whatever. Went on the parking lot. Went on the elevator. Went on couple my boats in my car. I see Jerry pull in and this red Audi and. Literally right here, like we're right here, and like you gotta come through right here, and we're like right on the sidewalk where the elevator is. Mm -hmm. So I see, it's um, Sherry, but I also seen that it was a female in a passenger seat. So yeah, I was like, was that a girl? Was that a girl in the car? Somebody was like, you know, my own girl, my kids, like, yeah, that was definitely a girl in the car. I was like, okay. So, literally, y'all, maybe a minute, two minutes, Keisha pulls in because she's here for that red party as well. She pulls in. As soon as she pulls in, I tell her, I say, Keisha, I just came here. She's like, where? I say, right here. He just came in here. And she was like, what? What are you doing here? I'm like, I don't know. Girl, call him. She literally calls him right then. I hear it over the um, car. You know, she calls him like, what you doing? Um, he was like, yeah, I know, I just seen your friend. So he acknowledged that he saw me as well. Who? She just needs to go park or whatever, so I don't know the whole conversation that they have. And I said, this is my bachelorette party night, so I'm just trying to have a good time. Like, the girls had a lot of stuff going on anyway. They had me get ready and all this stuff. So, you know, I didn't dwell in the conversation. I didn't talk about the conversation no more. Like, she's like, oh, man. She asked him about what, what are you doing or whatever, whatever. It's all, guess I was going for, and it's my best red party, so I'm gonna just turn up, you know? So, the night goes on, cool, cool, cool. Um, Monday morning comes around, Monday, Monday comes around, and I'm at work, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm. It's just really interesting to hear her point of view and really hear someone tell us the story and not with so much of she's a side chick or this that and the third i mean Brittany is going to get to that where she has her opinions but honestly i would love to hear Brittany's opinions now almost a year later and after she got dumped by her friend of four years what her thoughts are now seeing how Keisha has handled the last year I'm going to say it like that and what her thoughts and impressions are I just wonder what she would really have to say like, like should I ask Keisha like do you say something you know like are you saying with a girl in the car I don't know like hey um I don't want to know did Jeremy um say that it was her B that you know that it was a girl in the car she was like, no. So, <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, it was a girl in the car. And, of course, my friend at this point, y'all, she pregnant with Johnny and Jaya. She is, like, you know, early on, but she's sick. And, you know, she, you know, like, that's my girl. You know, she going through it. Like, she's pregnant. And so, I didn't really want to come up with that news anyway. But, you know, I thought because he know that I seen him and he seen me, that maybe he would have admitted that, you know, who was in the car. But he didn't. They gonna do me. <laughs> they gonna do me. But yeah, she said, no, nah, I didn't do that. And we know she went out with me, we friends, or whatever, so we going on. Like, she was like, girl, what she look like? Da, 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 da. Come around. We find out who the girl is. We find out who the girl is, and me being a friend, a best friend at that, and as any of y'all would do, because maybe that's girl code. <laughs> that's girl code. So, yeah, we found her on Instagram. I follow her. 
Like, I'm not really trying to keep tabs on her, but if my girl ever needed me to see something, because she's feeling some type of way about what a man got going on. I'm thinking to myself, so Brittany followed her, but why didn't Keisha ever just actually approach her? Or is it that Keisha actually knew who she was from the time that he actually did start talking to her? Um, he knew she knew who he was messing with, basically. So um, interesting. Whatever. I need to be able to go on here and say something right quick, you know? And it's also like Keisha has such a script in a way of how she tells things. It's hard to really get the full picture of the story because she repeats everything almost in the exact same way over and over and over and over and over, and over again that you can't really to me it's almost like loses the characteristics of the story because she's always on message it's like she's following a script it's like i got too much of my own life going on so any time i'm getting married y'all at a time i'll get married next month so i'm definitely not like just like you know talking to girls so i don't ever think this way. but i did follow the girl i did follow the girl and yeah, that was it. Some things definitely was taking place. Um, and I'm just going to say I now, so we can't stop thinking about it. The girl I seen in the car that night is, is that mama. So, <laughs> yeah, that's baby mama. That's baby mama number two. I want to say her name in this video. Just because, you know, in my place we talk on her, I don't know her at all. Like we never had a conversation. Of course, I know of her all the way. Like you, you know, I, I know of her fully in depth from what I know from my brand, but I don't know her. So I'm not So this might be where Jeremy had a problem with Keisha because what she does know of her, she's saying she knows because Keisha told her. And what she does seem to know of her by the time you get to finish watching this is that she knows quite a bit. She knows a lot of detail regarding Jeremy's personal life and what was going on with he and Ashley, which may have been the reason why Jeremy was so upset because Keisha really did tell her a lot because she is going to, in this video, tell a lot. I'll say her name. You know, but y'all know who she is, so yeah, it's there. So with that being said, <laughs> just the timeline. So I know that's one of the big things that's that's going on. That's the whole big thing about what was really going on because a lot of y'all feel like they try to kick it in the one night stand. And I think they Keisha and Jeremy, Marco Jeremy, tried to kick it like so y'all, y'all say that he tried to keep in like it was a one night stand when he messed around and got her pregnant. But I just told y'all facts. <laughs> I just told y'all facts. If you don't know, I got married September 8, 2018. And yeah, that was about my 18th, December 2020. So that is my That was then, it would have been September. That was in August, actually, my bachelorette party was. So, I don't know what happened. I don't know how long it was before that moment. And from what he said to my friend, it wasn't long before that moment. That was supposed to be the first night they kicked it. But from what I know, so like I said, August 2018, I know for a fact he been messing with her for that long. So the one night stand thing, it's a cap. He ain't never necessarily say it like that, but it's a cap. <laughs> So she named the baby August. They started dating in August or that she saw them in August. Um, I think August's birthday is in March, maybe end of February, March, I think is when he turned a year. Um, he's getting ready to be two years old. 
Um, but if it is that they truly got together in August and she named him August, I mean, no matter what anyone has to say or whatever, um, I think, I mean, clearly Ashley really did like Jeremy. My thing is this, I don't, I'm not a Keisha disliker or a Keisha hater or anything. My thing is this, Keisha is so aggressive in her pursuit to hold on to people's thoughts about what is going on in her relationship you can't control other people's opinions about your relationship if people want to think it's shit then fine if people want to think it's amazing that's fine but at the end of the day no one should really care that much what other people think about what you have going on yes it is your brand yes it is your money maker yes it is a lot of things but at the end of the day I feel like this woman has wasted a lot of time trying to control the message and the dialogue and the thought process around her relationship rather than just have a damn relationship. And that's what I would say about the book too. I think the book is like a lot about nothing. And if you watch her channel, it, it just is a lot about nothing. I honestly found Brittany's video more interesting than I did um, the final chapters because clearly Keisha is really going through. She's a woman who is bound and determined to hold on to her, um, to her relationship basically at all costs, almost to the point where she's looking thirsty. Just, that's just my opinion. So yeah. Um, my friend prayed me during this time, so of course, you know, like she going through it, like she already emotional, and she finds out her baby daddy is conversing with somebody else. Because that's all it was at that point. After she confronted him about it, it's just conversation. It's not nothing like that. So I don't know all of it and what entails in this relationship. I don't know what all happened. I'm sure for a fact. I'm not sure for a fact because I'm not. Not for a fact, I don't know, so I'm not sure, but I know niggas, and I'm sure he was not telling her baby mama, number two, all of what was his reality. And to be honest, quite honest, when Keisha was pregnant, she, at an early step, like early in her pregnancy, they told her she could have been sexually active, she couldn't have any course, no contraction. So, he was definitely probably well, he was definitely lacking that part in their relationship and because their relationship was still so fresh like that was important that was big like he admitted to it and everything in the book you know and all that good stuff he said like like they relationship and me knowing like because I was here before before they got together so me knowing, like, you know, I seen, I seen how this happened, I saw how they got together, you know, they fell in love, like, we grown, there's not no there and living home when you can fall in love. I fell in love, my nigga, I'm only 18, and 18 for the time, 19, when I fell in love, my man, and I fell in love quick, so there ain't no time frame on falling in love. And I feel like people saying, like, she asked for it, like, she asked you for the situation. Yes, she prayed for these and she wanted to be a mom she wanted to be a wife she you know she's praying for these she prayed for these you think that she wanted the right goals that she really have she got out on my platform before before you know like for my life on those to be a mom so a lot of people say yeah that she asked for these she asked to be she asked to be a mom <laughs> and i said i thought about it maybe you ain't pray for the right thing you forgot to pray when you pray for a man you ain't pray for a committed faithful hard working Man, like okay Brittany absolutely um you have to be super duper specific and I think that Keisha was um not specific enough she got one but she didn't get what she look you may get what you want but you might not be getting exactly what you needed I'd rather get what I need rather than than just get what I want because sometimes what you think you want is not what you need right guys <laughs> That sounds so bad. But you ain't crazy for, for that God-fearing, you know, 
I still talk about baby. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't mess that part of my character up because that ain't, that ain't the part. Of my it's the face. Hi, tie dye is the name. She ain't pregnant for that part. She probably did, but I don't know. But yeah, that part was me. Like that part was me. Like she, you know, that part was me. <laughs> so she got a man and she fell in love with him. They were vibing together. Everybody saw that once he did on the. Hey, Tadai. I don't know if um, if you're still here in the comments. Yes, um, this is a mess. Um, we have a small group. We've got about 15 all together for book club, but um, I don't know if everyone is cooking tonight or whatever. So I said, let me just do this reaction. So um, sit back. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. But it's just a, it's just a small group right now. So I didn't want to just not do anything so i just uh went ahead and doing this reaction so bubble up any questions that you have and i'm gonna flip back screens and i'm just gonna be watching this and reacting to it i will drop the link if you want to join in and ask any questions but we're not going to go through the whole thing this is roughly about an hour um but we are starting a new book next week and i think we're going to work on another time to see when is a better time that everyone can kind of join or maybe even um potentially even meet up in the discord so which may even work better i don't know but i'm definitely open to suggestions because i'd love to figure out a way to make this work um but yeah after everything that happened um the last couple of days and Brittany. uh I don't know if she just re-put this back out here, but I never got to see this last year. I watched it today and um, this is just my reaction. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to keep going on with this reaction. Cameron, we have that. Y'all, everybody loved that glow that they seen from him. Like the glow that he brought her, y'all loved that then. Quickly, you know, you know, they did get pregnant. She suffered a miscarriage. They agreed. They agreed to try again. They agreed to try again. They agreed to try again, and they got pregnant with the twins. So, I said, it's all this like is this before the cheating. So they got pregnant with the twins, and she's pregnant. She carried the baby or whatever. She finds out he's born. You know. Like my nigga, I'm pregnant, I'm sick as fuck, and my nigga over here conversing with somebody else. So of course, as any woman would, it's like not being pregnant or not, like your mind wondering, you all, you, you know, you trying to figure out what's going on with your man. You confronting him, you talking to him. Of course, she did cut that out, da 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 da. And he's a man. I said he's still looking at still sexually, so he can feel you what he want to do, and then she can fit it by he did what he want to do. Yeah, my dog was born different. Throughout this time, baby mama, number two, always knew about Keisha. Like, I think people saying like she's a victim or she got put in a bad situation or like, I don't have to bash her at all, y'all, because I don't got any gifts with her. I don't, I don't know her, I don't know her. So I'm not here to bash her, but I'm here more so to tell the truth on what I know and I know a lot <laughs> and to defend my friend because it's too much hate out there, it's too much hate going against her. So I'm just here to You know, um okay, so yeah Tade, I um I feel like Brittany, it's really interesting because Brittany is spitting facts and we're in the book. So to me, cue the relations it's really hard to follow Q the relations because the way that Keisha writes, it's so she just wants to impress everybody about how many no words she knows that it really is a difficult book to read. Not only because the subject matter is very nuanced. Um, her writing style is very basic and, um, it's difficult subject matter. I mean, she is. It's. 
you know, there's a lot of, um, I, I believe there's some, I don't want to say mental illness, but there's some mental, there's some challenges, uh, emotional challenges, let's put it that way. And there are people who are lacking in some emotional intelligence. It's, and maybe there is some mental illness. I'm not really sure. I think that there's anxiety. There is, um, you know, there, and there's also two people who are young, who are growing up in all fairness. And I just think that, um, Keisha is so on message with these talking points always. It's hard to really get the real story from her. That's just what I think. Um, so you just hear the same story over and over again, or you ask her some questions and she goes right back into this. It's interesting to hear Brittany tell the same story because I do feel like I'm hearing the same thing. So maybe a lot of this is the truth because it's hard for two people to tell the same story wrong or right. Um, but at least you're hearing some feelings attached to it rather than just the robotic um, explanation that Keisha gives all the time which doesn't give her a lot of sympathy or empathy from her subscribers so y'all yeah, uh, you see how Brittany's on message y'all hate her so much I don't hate her personally and I don't know that everyone else does hate her I think there's some people that do hate her of course um why I don't know I don't I'm not a Keisha hater I am watching her channel and I see conflicting messages so for me you know it really is a channel that I cover but as far as the hate I don't know that everybody hates her I don't I don't really buy into that What? Oh, okay. She knew But you know, uh, Jeremy and Keisha weren't really together like that. Like they were and they weren't. Hey, Brown Sugar, they were like growing in a relationship. And basically it's like they started a relationship and jumped and fast forwarded like two to three years. Like they just, they started a relationship and went from like zero to 60 like oh nice to meet you let's have a baby and and then it just went from there um guys we are brown sugar we are uh reacting to a little bit of this video i thought it would be cool to kind of look at when i um i didn't know what everyone was doing tonight with cooking for thanksgiving and everything so i suspect that this is going to be kind of a grab and go and um it just happened that this this really does coincide with a lot of chapter three and four. I don't know if you guys agree or not, but we're rounding out the initial story. And Brittany brings a really fresh perspective. 
even though Britney, I think Britney gave too much detail for the likings of Akeisha, Akeisha Key. Um, she, she said too much for a key. She said just enough for us. Um, but she, she is on message though. You can hear her. She's on message with the Keisha talking points of you guys hate her. You guys, this, you guys, that she really had kind of a cheerleader in Brittany. This was the friend that she should have kept <laughs> just to be honest. Uh, the friend that she has in D that is not the friend that I would have held on to. Uh, absolutely no. Um, or tried to develop. This is the friend that she actually should have kept because this one's the one that had her back. But let's listen in a little bit more. Um, we're like about 35 minutes in. But like I said earlier, we're going to be wrapping this book and we're going to go into Erica and White's book. Listen, um, it's another short reading, but I think it's going to be perfect for December as we do like December planning and getting ready for 2022 and goal setting and all of that. Um, you know, that's honestly, that's what I was working on a little bit tonight. And um, but yeah, let's listen to a little bit more. Um, I wanted to react to this um, and um and I will probably talk a little bit, just, I'm not going to do a dedicated video. I think I'm just going to give my overall impressions of the book. Um, I think, I don't know why Keisha wants everyone to go to the book other than the marketing and the fact that it costs like $24.99 because she basically retells the story all the time. Does she tell all of the detail? No, but it makes it very difficult because her writing style, she is so eager to get her point across you can't really just read the story. She's trying to wordsmith you to death to know for you to know that she knows a bunch of words and for her to tell you in three sentences what she should have said in one. And that's aggravating, um, you know, as a reader. It doesn't make it like for an enjoyable read. She thought she prayed for like crumbling in front of her because the name she reads, she's pregnant. She wants, she, she, she was looking for affection and comfort and all this stuff. But yeah, he did be worried about his own personal feelings. And I'm not bashing Jeremy either, y'all. But I guess in order to defend my friend, I gotta kinda throw you under the dress here for a little bit. I'm sorry, you gotta get big. I'm just trying to defend my friend. So yeah, like, that's probably one of the reasons you can't let me live. Of her stress, her stress of the word. So, anywho, I said, baby, my mother too knew about the situation from the get go. Keisha had messaged her. She read the messages. I've been on the phone with her while she was texting up these messages, trying to call the girl, everything. No, she got the messages. Like, telling her, like, you know, talking shit because she mad. You know how any woman would. Bitch, I'm crazy, da 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 And y'all ass over here thinking about me. You know what anybody would be saying in this position. So don't act like you wouldn't. Don't act like you wouldn't. <laughs> Look in the mirror, baby, and really see who you is. She came in her, of course, jumping, like trying to snap or whatever, or whatever. Well, I also think, to your point, um, I'm just going to say Ty because I feel like I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, I feel like she knew too much Keisha was sitting there running her business or running their business and she knew too many details and because she opened her mouth and told Brittany all these details and then asked Brittany to speak on her behalf all of this got out so number one you should have kept your mouth shut not telling all my business to your friends but then on top of that you wanted her to do a defend me video um, not really knowing that you had just given her a lot of information that was super private that maybe I didn't want everybody to know. And she should. So baby mama number two knew about this. She didn't care. She didn't even fuck about what Keisha was saying. She didn't care that Keisha was pregnant and going through this and all this stuff. She didn't care. She didn't care. So people keep trying to say that she's the victim and saying that he should not a victim is crazy. Y'all saying that she's not a victim because she asked for this. This is the life that she wanted. You think she wanted to be cheated on and get have a have a 
stepson or whatever. You know, like you think that's what she asked for? You think you think that's what she asked for? Granted, she did get into a relationship and they moved quick. They got pregnant quick. They started a family quick. It was quick. But you can't say she asked for this. You can't say she asked for the hurt that she has endured in this relationship. You can't say that. You cannot say that. But that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That in, like a grown, like you a woman and you're just how you saying. That's what you're saying. I'm sure y'all ain't probably got you done before. You. Well, you know, I think to Brittany's point, I think what she's saying is Brittany's coming from the perspective of a woman who now she is a woman. She met and fell in love with her man very young. I think Brittany met her husband at 17, 18 years old, which she tells later in this video. And, you know, Keisha, whether she was in love or not and made herself fall in love, the perspective that she is talking about is some of us maybe who've been through some things are older and can see that, yes, you did do this to yourself from the standpoint of you jumped both feet into the deep end of the pool and you didn't really know what you were getting into. Does that make it your fault? Does that make you a bad person? No, it doesn't. It just makes it that you ran on in and got, got in very deep and you got your feelings hurt, but that doesn't make, to me, that doesn't make her a bad person. Does that make you foolish and, you know, things that 20 somethings do or, or, or late teenagers do? Absolutely. Um, those are the things that you live and you learn. And, but again, this is a moment where Brittany will talk a lot of really, you know, Brittany comes from a really mature a much more mature standpoint than Keisha, I think mentally with her emotional intelligence. However, she does revert back to um, some of the things that are on message for Keisha. So where I think she knows a little bit better, or I think over time, like I was saying earlier, I don't know if you were in or not Ty, when I said this, but um, it, the real, the thing to me is that I wonder almost a year later, cause she, put this up on December 11th which was probably December 10th because she put stuff up the night before to go up in the morning um what her thoughts are now after seeing Keisha's behavior maybe having some time and distance away from Keisha knowing how Keisha operated depending on how she operated around her friend I don't know but I'm wondering I would love to know how she really feels now a year later. That's what I would like to know. You ask for that? You ask for that? Like, be real with yourself. You want to hate somebody so bad that you forget about, like, oh, you forget about self. You forget about self. You forget who you is. You forget. Like, baby, you, how you going to act? How you going to act? So, anywho, I'm sorry, y'all. I be getting my feelings sometimes. <laughs> but, anywho, she knew. She knew. That was in 2000. I said, that year was on 2019. She knew. And, and baby, the babies are here. And clearly, Jimmy's still messing with her. They had arguments about it. He said he was done talking to her. But of course, he's a nigga. And he's probably telling Keisha one thing and her mom to a whole nother thing. But that's nigga. You can't blame Keisha for that. You can't, everybody's so mad at Keisha about the situation for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, you know, I can reach out to, uh, Brittany. I can leave her a message or, um, like send her a message on IG or email her and see if she'd be interested in having a chat. I, I would love to, um, we'll see if she answers. Right. I, um, Hey, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to ask. Right. So I can certainly reach out and see if she's available to talk. I remember seeing her once um in Paris's chat not she wasn't necessarily chatting I think she did say something um because people were like Britney's in here and um and not not Britney blabber but this Britney um but I don't think she was saying too much I think she was just watching and it could have been one of the times that like Ashley and Hazel right yeah so she's 
she's been in the bushes basically um so maybe it's maybe she wants to come out the bushes now she does have her own platform and can sit and talk about things but it would be good to say or even if she decided to do a q a on this topic but as crazy as some people are over there on keisha's side her her strong arm um you know her gangsta boo i don't know if some people want to even get involved because it's like um them some of them folks cray so i don't know but you don't like her that's what it is but i can't, I can't tell why you don't like her you sound like you love her you're obsessed with her like this is the part where she goes on like on message of like a keisha fan you're here <laughs> but whatever and we're people who just want to speak that game i don't speak Brittany is funny with this when she's like, because y'all gang gang and y'all just want the tea. Um, but then no, the ones like this is this is interesting. <laughs> This is uh, where a lot of people got mad because they felt like it wasn't right for her to be discussing um, Ashley's um, pregnancies. And, you know, uh, I'm not really hearing anything that upsets me, but um, I don't know. I mean, clearly this is stuff that she knows because Keisha told her and I think that this is why Jeremy got pissed at Keisha because she was running her mouth for whatever reason she wanted to keep this baby maybe because he looked like something he looked like money she thought she was guaranteed for a lot in chick I ain't gonna say this thing. That's like I said I don't know if there was, I don't know what her reason was she could have just wanted her baby she been wanting to probably have a baby also, but she was a girl. Maybe this is gonna be their baby. From what I heard, that's the case. That was gonna be their baby. His girlfriend was a baby. But they put his pregnancy. So yeah, she get pregnant and Jeremy like trying to make home right. And at this time, at this time, he should have found know that this girl is pregnant. So he trying, and I don't know when he actually found out that she was pregnant. To be honest. You know, he say one thing. He said, you know, he found out at this time, but he could have known before and she could have caught him right up in I don't know it. And he's going to go on base with what he told his girl and what his girl related to me. So, you know, I don't know when necessarily they found out she was pregnant, but well, I know my friend found out she was pregnant. And yeah, like he was not really there. Like, you know, from what I know, he was not really there during her pregnancy, but he also kind of, he, got, he also encouraged her to like 
Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, why you want to do that? Why you want to go and have a baby by me? Why you want to do that? So she had a baby, you know, and she had a relationship with her ex-girlfriend and they was going to be a family. So yeah, I don't know how heavily Jeremy was involved during her pregnancy from what I know, not much. I'm going to say he probably called and checked on her every now and then. And I'm just be straight up. When she did find out, she was like, let's do a DNA test. She did research, found out he can do a DNA test. Are they still in the womb? And let's do it. Let's do it. Baby mama was two. Then wasn't going for it. It didn't happen. She wasn't going for it. And I mean, as much as they pushed it and pushed it for months and months and months, agreeing to it, then counseling, like, nah, we're going to do that, you know, it didn't happen. So, mind you, like I said, they was messing around probably strong before she got pregnant. I ain't going to say strong, strong. I don't really know how strong, but he was still definitely messing like I said. He was a time period. It was not what I'm saying. So he was messing with her. Clearly strong and then she got pregnant and was like he went ghost though. But he was that. He wasn't what it was. Because now he realized I'm like shit, this girl talking about keeping this damn baby. And I got a whole family over here and this were homies, you know? This were homies. Like I'm finna fuck up everything I got going. Because of this. And Keisha had already told him. Like he's already got caught with her. Like and it should have been a fine. I'm like, Jeremy, you thought it was should have been fine. And I seen you at the same spot. How I run in Atlanta. You just had me at the same spot at the same time. She just said one too many, like Jeremy was stupid. I think she talked down on Jeremy one too many times for Keisha's liking. And and really and truly though, I'm gonna say this. I think she probably felt stupid. Keisha, just to be honest, um, because you can't have your friend calling your man stupid and not feel a way that, well, shit, was I stupid too? I mean, clearly, you know what I mean? So, uh, not that I'm justifying her dumping Ashley, I mean, dumping Brittany as a friend, but I can get that she probably felt a way because I mean, Brittany, um, girl <laughs> she told how she felt and she said what she had to say so i think that um keisha clearly felt a way let's go listen to a little bit more before we close things out he couldn't keep his hands off ashley yeah and you know let's just say we know he liked ashley a lot and i think for a lot of us who see that ashley seems to be a very sweet girl and all of that it is interesting to think that maybe he had, there was like this whole romance going on. I think Jeremy is probably a jerk. I think Jeremy, when she said Jeremy ghosted her, I believe that. I don't know that it's a case of who he likes more other than Jeremy, I think wanted to do what Jeremy wanted to do. And whether he enjoyed chilling with Ashley or not, at the end of the day, he did it. Why he did it, is it because he liked her more and liked Keisha less? I don't know that that's the case. I think it's because Jeremy was doing what he wanted to do and Jeremy is an asshole. Now, is Keisha um, not wrong in any of this? I think Keisha is trying to control something she has absolutely no control over and needs to stop because she's really wasting her time. And I've said this like a million times, Jeremy is for himself, period. And I think most people say that he is definitely for himself. This kind of battle or whatever is going on between the two of these women, there's a lot of hurt feelings because both of these women are in love with this man who is not doing anything but himself. And it's sad because um, I think I don't think Ashley is in doubt anymore about what her feelings are and what his feelings are, but Keisha is really, I think, like how they say delusional. I think she is just, I think she's got it twisted that because this guy's got his underwear there and he lives with her, that that means something more than what it is. Um, I think this is a guy who is doing what he's got to do 
And maybe he does love and care about her to a certain degree because that's where his babies are and stuff. But a man who really, really loves and cares about you is not going to be doing all of this. And I think sometimes young women do get into accepting crumbs, you know, instead of getting what you deserve as from a man who really cares about you, there are women out here who will um, accept crumbs. And if you've got a guy who's throwing you crumbs and even though, you know, you deserve a Kobe beef steak, um, she, and I think she's realized that, you know what, he, he was an asshole. He was a jerk. And I think if Keisha got real with herself, she would see that she's putting in a lot of effort and he's an asshole and he's a jerk, but Keisha wants him so bad. She's willing to look past it. Um, I think Ashley, Excuse me, I keep saying Ashley. I think Brittany realized this and she said it enough, but I think she thought her friendship was stronger to be able to withstand her commentary on this girl's man. And clearly it wasn't strong enough. That should have been a fine right there that this one gonna be good. If that wasn't right back to you, you'd be like, oh yeah, now I need to stray away. I don't need this. Ain't, ain't no good with her friend because that's crazy. We in this whole big ass city and we at the same, I'm at the same place at the same time with my girl. That should told you something in. But for whatever reason, she still messed around with her. So yeah, <laughs> after she got pregnant, it wasn't like this. And I didn't know, like she said that he should like, you know, I'm sorry. Like while she was pregnant, I'm sorry. You know, I took you through this life. You was pregnant, I see how it is. And I, you know, so now baby daddy here with you and supporting you because even though Jeremy was coming home and being there, he wasn't there. He wasn't there emotionally and all that stuff. So she said that she basically understood like she, she apologized for calling her and her while she was pregnant. So she acknowledged her wrongs in the situation. She knew that she was wrong. And I just don't like how everybody is like trying to say she's a victim. She just got put in a bad situation. But what is Keisha? What is Keisha? You saying she's not a victim because she asked for this? What is Keisha? She had definitely had the short end of the fucking stick. She definitely had the short end of the stick and hold on, 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 um, I just feel like people really feel like Keisha made a choice or she's making choices um, dealing with uh, Jeremy. And I do believe that that's true. She is opting in. But at the end of the day, uh, we know that Keisha from her book had a very traumatic kind of early life. And I think that she was set up this way to be able to accept very little, accept the crumbs, not really um, have a full and meaningful relationship where she is not constantly doing something for someone um, and expecting them to do and be there for her the way she wants them to. It's like she latches on to people who are not as invested in her as she is in with them. And it's also to me, it's like, is she really invested in them or is she invested into the idea of them? Keisha is really all for a relationship, but not, and I hate to say, I just thought of this, that not the relations <laughs> like Keisha is all in for the look the image of the relationship or what it can do, what it means, but not really seeing that girl, you don't even have anything. So it's really, I don't know, just like she's got this relationship with D, but do you really have something with D? Is D really a friend to you or is D someone who really kind of almost works for you, even though she may not work for her? Um, it, who's the user here? Is Keisha the user or is D the user? Is Jeremy the user or is Keisha the user? It's like Keisha is, she's buying people. She's using, it's weird. It's very interesting. Um, I will post the link to this. Let me put this in the chat. If you've not seen this in full, go ahead, check it out. Anyone else who's coming on the check-in, check this out. Um, 
it's right here in the chat and I will put it in the, um, can I pin it? Yes. Okay. I will put it in the comments also, but it's pinned in this chat. Um, guys, we are done with Q the relations. This was one of the shortest and most painful books to read. Um, again, because the writing style is really a challenge now. Um, is it on message? Is it on Keisha's, um, is it consistent with what Keisha tells us up and down the YouTube streets? I think so. Um, you guys tell me who've read it um, here in the book club. Let me know. But next month we're going to do something different because I don't think this format is going to work um, long term. I think we need to do something a little bit different. We might go ahead and meet up in the Discord, which would be more of like a Zoom-like and i'm wondering if that's going to be better and maybe we're not going to do it on wednesday nights maybe we're going to do it like on saturday or something like that and figure out what works best so you guys let me know um i really appreciate any of you um who uh want to comment down below let me know what your thoughts are overall on the book and our go forward on the next one it's posted in the amazon book list and if you have any questions let me know otherwise guys thank you so much for viewing this content coming in and joining the the chat and um, i hope that you guys have a great evening and this was really fun this was a fun um this was a fun process and um i look forward to starting again the next book so guys take care and i will see you uh tomorrow morning when i go live happy thanksgiving by the way